All right, uh, to, uh, to, to everybody listening out there, my name's Buddy. Um, I've been spending the past few weeks trying to get this, this, uh, this radio working, um, and I'm so sorry about the quality. I've, I've got some guys out there trying to get me some better parts. Anyway, I, uh, I started this radio station to help you. Yes, that's right, you. Uh, most, uh, most people don't know what's, what's happening out there in the, the Great British Wasteland, so I'm here to provide that for you. Um, and, you know, to play a few tunes. So let's, uh... Let's 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 start at the beginning. In the beginning, the universe was created. This has made a lot of people very angry, and has widely been regarded as a bad move. <laughs> no. mm. I'm sorry. Let's no. Let's 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 start with the war. War, war never changes. The Great War lasted two hours, and on Saturday, the twenty third of October, twenty seventy seven. The U.S. fired nuclear bombs at China, while China fired at the U.S. No one knows who fired first. Nukes were also aimed at other countries, ensuring that nobody could rise up and take the power in between. And Great Britain burned with the rest of the world, destroying the European Commonwealth. Closed off from the other countries, Great Britain had tried to recover. The bombs destroyed most of the landscape, making it unrecognisable. This became known as the Second Blitz. From this, the survivors tried to continue surviving. Uh, groups known as the Vikings formed different clans, all of them being raiders and murderers, and people that would otherwise ruin the day of anyone unfortunate to not be one of them. Over the years, uh, three main factions rose up, and they were, they were trying to take control of the country. In the year 2258, the Civil War began. The Children of Atom believed the Great War was a blessing. From the old government, Parliament rose up, trying to establish a new world order. Phoenix was born from the ashes of the old world, uh, forming to combat Parliament and to look out for the small people. The war raged on for 27 years. London was the, the war zone, making it unlivable, except for the, the creature that was born during the Second Blitz. Each faction fell and shrunk in numbers, uh, <clears throat> still trying to lead the way forward. The power vacuum that was uh, created be because of the, the Civil War created even more factions, which are all rising up and wanting to claim the wasteland for themselves. The current date is the 3rd of September, 2289. Four years since the end of the Civil War. We now live in what is known as the Great British Wasteland. Fallout. Darkest Hour. Chapter 1. On a hot and sunny day, not a single cloud in the clear blue sky, Dax, a man in his early 20s, makes his way uphill, carrying a backpack full of junk. When he finally reaches the top, he comes face to face with a makeshift wooden wall, spreading out both left and right. The wall goes around Holling's farm to protect its inhabitants and its produce from the dangers of the wasteland. Dax, weighed down from his scavenging, slowly makes his way over to the gate. A double-door, eight-foot-tall gate with two watchtowers either side, forming the gatehouse that guards the only entrance into the farm. Dax drops his backpack on the grass and runs his hand through his scruffy black hair. Halt! Who goes there? Andrew, it's me, Dax. Sorry, Dax. You know how it goes. Yeah, yeah, just let me in. I've been scavenging all day, I just want some rest. The guards on each watchtower start turning a wheel, allowing the gates to swing open outwards, allowing Dax to enter his home. The wall forms a complete square around the farm. In the center is the only house, the house is large enough to shelter all of the settlers and is known as the Hive. Walkways stretch all around the walls, allowing guards to keep view of the fields in all directions. The walkways even split off into bridges leading to the Hive. Andrew, a few years younger than Dax, has a skinny face to match his body. He has leather armor over his chest and a handmade pistol strapped to the belt around his waist. On top of his head is a worn cap with ginger hair poking out of the holes. He leans over the side towards Dax. Psst, Dax, I managed to swipe a bottle of Ronnie's homemade wine. Wanna come over to my room later? If she catches you with it, she'll feed you to her cats. Exactly. 
So, help me get rid of the evidence. <laughs> sure. Day I've had, I need a drink. Dax makes his way past all the farmers tending to their gardens as he goes towards the hive. Dax is wearing light armor to allow him the agility needed to scavenge the surrounding area. The settlers inside Holling's farm wear simple dirty clothes that provide little protection as they go about their daily routines. <gasps> Dax, you're back! A teacher, no older than 18, runs over to embrace Dax in a hug, leaving behind the children sitting on the grass, waiting for the lesson to continue. As they hug, Dax runs his fingers through her soft, blonde hair. Sorry I'm late. Heard some Vikings nearby had to hide until they moved on. Still made it back, didn't I? See, Annabelle? I told you Dax always survives. He must have some rad roach DNA in him. A woman in her late forties comes over to join Dax and Annabelle. I know, Mother. That doesn't stop me from worrying. Worrying won't change anything. Something you learn as you get older. I better get back to my crops. As Annabelle's mother leaves, one of the children from the class calls over to their teacher. Annabelle, you were going to tell us how to be special. Go back to class. I need sleep anyway. Any chance you can deliver my supplies? After class, I'm I'm almost finished. Now, go, go get some sleep. Love you. Love you too. Dax kisses Annabelle before heading off into the main house. As Annabelle goes back to her class, she looks back over her shoulder to get another look at Dax. She stands at the front of the class, pushes her blonde hair out of her blue eyes before continuing her lesson. Now, who can tell me what special is? Out of a class of a dozen children, only one puts their hand up. Anyone else? No? Okay, Tessa. Take it away. Special. Strength, perception, endurance, charisma, intelligence, agility, and luck. They're the things you'll need to survive the wasteland. That's correct. Each and every one of you have your own preferences. However, each one has a use. Know which one or ones you're good at. Knowing that will help you decide the best course of action to take to survive. That's your homework. Same time tomorrow, everyone. Class dismissed. The children start leaving to go around the farm and start playing. Annabelle picks up Dax's backpack before going to the hive. The ground floor is made up of a kitchen and different workstations. The upper floors are the living areas for the residents. Inside a closed-off room is a middle-aged man called Jacob. He's the only resident who understands how electricity works. He is the sole reason the lights stay on. Inside his workshop, Jacob is squinting through his glasses with small lenses inspecting a terminal. Every now and again he impulsively twitches. Jacob presses a button on a nearby radio, bringing it to life. So one of my runners, Frederick, he's a... Uh, he's, he's a good guy. Missing an eye. Funny story behind that, but I'll, uh, I'll, I'll tell you another time if you don't kill me. Um, he, he found out how super mutants came over here from the, uh, the US. And he was scavenging in the, the oxygenetics and he found a terminal. Hacked it and found all these logs about the, the triple S. The super soldier serum. America was working on a, on a similar serum. In the, uh, the, uh, the, the FEV. So oxygen started working on their own. Uh, which is why we have super mutants. At least now we know. And uh, that leads us into our next song from Before the War. Which is called, At Least Now We Know. So, yeah, here you go. No one's meant to last, but it just happened so fast. I never saw, never saw, never saw it coming. I know it's too good to be true. I really love you. Now you face, now you work. Everything is numb. As the door to his workshop opens, he jumps, grabbing a pistol, and aims it at Annabelle, who is walking through the door. Ah, uh, Jacob! Will you put that thing down? God. Well, you didn't knock. Someone barging into my room. Could have been a Viking. You've got to stop being so jumpy. Jacob switches off the radio. I've got you some supplies. How could you have gotten me supplies? You've never gone outside the farm before. Okay, fine. Dax got you some supplies. And I'm bringing them to you. A much more believable story. Oh, come, come, where is it? 
Annabelle takes the backpack off and pulls out a plastic box that has been labeled power. Anything you found for you would be in here. Uh, thank you, uh, my, my dear. As Annabelle puts on the backpack, she looks around the room searching for someone. So, how's the new apprentice going? Uh, I'm sorry, who? Oh, yes, 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 yes. I'm, I'm, af- I'm afraid another quitter. Gee, I wonder why. I've got to go. More supplies to deliver. Uh, well, just make sure you knock next time. All right? Uh, you're welcome. Annabelle leaves Jacob to continue inspecting his terminal. She makes her way over to the workshop next door. Inside is a man named Clancy, who's skilled at building almost anything. Age has taken its toll, with his thick hair and beard more white than grey. He stands over a table wearing his battle-worn brown leather jacket, drawing blueprints for a new project. Hmm. What are you working on, Clancy? Oh, oh. A new idea that came to me in my sleep. The problem with turrets is that they take up too much power. With the right materials, I should be able to make a control board in every guard tower. Anyone sees any Vikings, they flip the correct switch and the turret will activate. Only consume power when we need to. That sounds great. So, now we just need the turrets. Oh, one step at a time, my dear. Dax has supplies for you. No idea what's inside. Annabelle pulls out a box that has the name Clancy written across it and underlined. As soon as Clancy sees his supplies, he tears it out of her hands and starts opening the box. Ha! Ah, your boyfriend is a good man. Why? What's inside? Clancy puts his old, rough hand inside the box and pulls out a handful of screws. Ran out of these little bastards months back. Screws? Never underestimate the small things. Anything else useful? Annabelle rummages around Dax's bag. Sorry, just clothes left. Never mind. I've got stuff to keep me busy. Annabelle leaves Clancy to his projects and makes her way over to the wardrobe. The wardrobe is a room filled with trunks, overflowing with clothes. Annabelle puts Dax's bag down on the floor. Everything Dax has scavenged is Viking armor. A carpenter named Ashley Frost comes into the room. She's wearing a tool belt around her waist an unbuttoned blue and white checkered shirt over a white top. She takes off her hard hat, revealing coal black hair cut short. Hey, Annabelle! I heard Dax is back. Did he manage to find any screws for me? Um, he did find screws, but they were for Clancy. For Clancy? I told Dax I need screws. Ah, uh, I don't know. The box had his name on it. Maybe Dax thought Clancy needed it more. <laughs> I explained to your idiot boyfriend why I needed them. Uh, He's not an idiot! He helps this community with scavenging. We all help this community. Do you think this place relies on one man? Excuse me, could you please use your indoor voice? Jacob has his head poking out of the door of his workshop, his hand scratching his thin black hair. Clancy also comes out of his workshop, placing a pencil behind his ear. What's going on? Frost, did I hear my name? Jacob, crawl back into your cave. Clancy, come on, man. I need those screws Dex gave you. Jacob's head quickly moves between Clancy and Ashley before he quickly retreats back into the safe space of his workshop. I'm afraid I've got plans for them. Dex saw fit to give them to me. Plans? I've been needing those screws for a month now. Sophie only has a couple weeks to go, and I've wanted to have a cut built by now. But no... You get the screws. Ashley, don't take it personally. Sophie doesn't need a cot. We have to prioritize our resources. We need security. We have security! Annabelle slowly moves away from Ashley and Clancy, trying not to get involved in the heated argument. This place is secure. And I plan on making it more secure. (laughs) But we don't need it. A cot we do need. A cot is a luxury. Not a necessity. As Annabelle reaches the bottom of the stairs, her mother calls down to her from the top. Annabelle, the meeting has just started. Really? Already? Just started. Get there now and we shouldn't miss much. Annabelle and her mother start climbing the stairs of the hive. The next five floors are the sleeping quarters for the community. The attic is used for seeing the surrounding land. Perfect for snipers. The floor below, the sixth floor, is an open room, used for communal meetings with a stockpile of weapons and supplies. 
No stairs lead up to the sixth floor. Just a single hatch with a removable ladder that can be secured from above. In the event of the farm getting overrun, settlers can secure themselves on the sixth floor. Annabelle and her mother arrive on the sixth floor, where a clean-shaved man with dark brown hair, wearing a clean three-piece blue suit, is addressing the crowd. This man is Dylan Robinson, the leader of Hollings Farm. It's not just one. We've heard the same story from different groups of scouts. Vikings have been raiding the other settlements around here. They're getting stronger now. This could be separate groups or one massive group. It's too early to tell. And what are you going to do about it? I can assure you I've not been idle. Lo and myself have been looking into every option we could think of and, well, it's probably best I let our head of security speak. Lo, tell them our plan. A man dressed in handmade armor stands next to Dylan. Around his waist is a belt with a couple of guns and on his back a rifle. He has a round face with a thick, dark blonde beard blending seamlessly into his thick hair. One thing to remember is we're safe. We have walls, we have guards, and we can see the surrounding area. To prepare, I'm going to start giving weapons lessons. Some of you don't know how to fire a gun. If we get attacked, everyone should know how to defend themselves. No need to rely on the guards. So, Lowe's in charge now. Lowe is not the leader. I am. Well, he's the one making the plans. He's the head of security. It makes sense to have him plan our security. I know many of you are starting to think I don't care. I'm not an idiot. But my grandfather was one of the founders of this farm, and my father the leader before me. I plan to continue their legacy. I can assure you Lo and I have thought everything out. You might not agree with some of my decisions, but I have kept us safe. I have been an excellent head of security, even since Potter's untimely death. Upon hearing the name Potter, Annabelle starts making her way towards the hatch door. Where are you going? I'm just getting some air. Fill me in later. Annabelle leaves the attic and the hive itself. She spends the time walking around the farm, trying to clear her head. The majority of the settlers are at the meeting. Except for a few guards on the walls, Annabelle has the peace and quiet to walk around the growing plants, feeling at peace with the world. Vikings! Annabelle turns towards the gatehouse to see Andrew blowing on his horn. Vikings! Fight! Ah! Bullets hit Andrew in the back, causing him to fall from the watchtower. Annabelle ducks and hides among the growing plants, hoping not to be seen. She looks up at the watchtowers to see Vikings climbing onto them from the outside. With Andrew gone, the guard in the other watchtower tries to stop the Viking. As the guard tries to aim his gun, the Viking hacks at the hand with his axe before slashing across the guard's stomach, freeing his intestines. Annabelle watches in horror as the Vikings open the gate, allowing a dozen Vikings access. Every Viking is wearing different armor they've looted from their victims. Some carry guns, others swords, axes, or spears. The majority of them have round shields. The colors on the shields represent the various Viking clans. These shields are yellow and black, the colors of the Hazard clan. As Annabelle is fixed on the Viking, a hand touches her shoulder, snapping her out of her trance. Annabelle turns around to see her mother, kneeling next to her. They're inside. Doesn't matter. We need to get inside the hive. The guards will do their jobs. We need weapons. Annabelle and her mother begin running towards the hive. The few guards on the walls turn inwards towards the main gate, aiming their weapons ready to open fire on the Vikings storming through the gatehouse. While their backs are turned, all along the walls, more Vikings climb over and start slaughtering the guards. The Vikings from the main gatehouse enter the farm unopposed. From on top of the walls, the Vikings have killed the guards on watch and have the farm surrounded. They start moving along the walkways towards the hive. One of the Vikings aims his scope and fires. Annabelle falls to the ground to see her mother's blank expression looking back at her. Mother? Dylan comes out with a rifle, leading the settlers into battle. Lo, Dax, Ashley and Clancy are among the settlers. This farm has never been taken, nor shall it. This is our home. We shall defend it. Everyone take cover and deep breaths. My guards with me. Lo leads the guards towards the walls to take their high ground, while Dylan leads the armed settlers. Annabelle takes her eyes off her mother only to make eye contact with a Viking wearing leather armor. Come here, girly. The Viking, carrying a spear and a shield, starts running toward Annabelle, who throws a handful of dirt into his face. Ah! 
Annabelle picks up a small gardening fork from the soil and uses it to stab the Viking in the leg. Ah, you fucking bitch! I'm gonna make you pay for that! The Viking looks up, seeing his chance, pulls the gardening fork out of his leg, changing it for his spear and begins charging towards Annabelle. She turns around and runs, trying to avoid the battle as both Vikings and settlers die all around her. She makes it inside the hive and hides inside Clancy's workshop. The sole Viking enters and slowly scans the hallway, thinking where to go. Come out. Make things easier for yourself. The Viking enters Jacob's workshop, looking for Annabelle. Ha ha ha! Lucky me! No, no. Please, no! The Viking drags Jacob out of his workshop by his thin black hair, into the hallway, and throws him down on the floor. The Viking stabs Jacob in the back using the tip of the spear. Ah! Uh, who's next? Jacob dying a slow and painful death, starts moving towards his right ankle. The Viking spots this and sees the pistol in its strap. Oh, poor mistake. The Viking uses the spear to slice the back of Jacob's right ankle. Uh, the Viking bends down and unstraps the pistol. Don't worry, I'll trade you for it. The Viking gives Jacob his spear, stabbing him in his belly. The Viking leaves Jacob bleeding out and enters another workshop. The Viking comes back out, holding Tessa to his body with his left arm, while the right has the pistol aimed at her head. What's your name? Tessa! Clancy appears at the entrance to the hive. He looks down to see the corpse of Tessa. His old eyes look up at the Viking who hasn't noticed him yet, and starts shooting. The Viking turns around, returning fire, and makes his way up the stairs. Using the distraction, Annabelle exits the workshop and jumps into the wardrobe. She lands on a backpack full of clothes, the one that Dax scavenged, and gets an idea. Clancy enters the hive focused on the Viking. He reaches the bottom of the stairs and opens fire on the Viking at the top. Clancy gets shot in the shoulder, but manages to kill the Viking, causing his lifeless body to fall down the stairs. Clancy starts slowly making his way around the workshops for any more Vikings, only to find one who raises their hands. Wait, it's me, Annabelle. The Viking takes its helmet off, Revealing, it is Annabelle. Annabelle? You, you're a Viking? Of course I'm not. Dax scavenged the gear and I dressed as one. I thought they might not shoot me. A bullet rips out of Clancy's stomach, causing him to fall onto the floor, dropping his gun. Another Viking bursts into the room, picking up a gun. He puts it in his bag and swaps it for an axe. Not worth the bullet. The Viking repeatedly swings his axe down into Clancy's skull before turning to Annabelle. Come on. Let's claim this farm. The Viking goes upstairs to continue searching the hive. Annabelle puts the helmet back on and slowly makes her way outside disguised as a Viking. She looks all around the farm, watching the slaughter unfold. All along the floor, she sees corpses with familiar faces, including her mother. She looks behind her and spots Dax, backed up against the hive, trying to avoid Vikings from every direction. He has one of their spears in his hand and slices away as the Vikings get close. Stop! Everyone at the farm turns to see Dylan and Lowe on their knees, guns to their heads, on top of the walkway, surrounded by Vikings. Tell them to surrender their weapons. Dylan remains fixed, unable to decide what to do. If they surrender, we'll let them live. <laughs> we both know that's not true. Hollings Farm was founded of dirt. Now, it will be left in wood and steel. The Viking shoots Dylan in the head, spraying his brains all over the grass as his lifeless body falls off the walkway and down to the earth. You fucker! Lo gets to his feet and tackles the Viking, resulting in both of them going off the walkway. They collapse onto the ground near Dylan's corpse. Lo quickly grabs the Viking's knife. However, as he's about to use it, he gets shot down, the bullets ripping through his body. The Viking and settlers continue fighting, one of the Vikings after Dax finally losing his patience. Can't even kill a boy. I'll handle this. The Viking pulls out a pistol and aims at Dax. No, don't! The bullet misses Dax and hits a petrol canister, setting it alight. Within the radius, Dax and a dozen Vikings get caught by the explosion and collapse to the ground. The explosion sets part of the hive on fire, which slowly begins to spread. Annabelle stares at Dax's motionless burning body before making her way towards the main gatehouse. She spots a pile of Vikings on the ground. As she gets closer, she realizes they're holding Ashley face down, trousers around her ankles and a Viking on top of her. 
Stop, please. It's no fun if you don't resist. We'll still keep you. No point killing a body like that. Annabelle walks past, locking eyes with Ashley. As she's watching the tears flow down Ashley's pretty face, one of the Vikings turns to Annabelle. You want a turn? Get in line. Unable to reply, Annabelle continues walking towards the gatehouse. Once she's outside, she begins running as fast as she can, not wanting to look back at the horror. The hive engulfed by flame, sending a pillar of thick black smoke into the clear blue, cloudless sky. She leaves her home behind her, venturing out into the wasteland for the first time, only with the Viking clothes on her back. On a desolate road, a ghoul arrives at a junction and stops to stare blankly at an oddly shaped rock. Ah, what did one snowman say to the other snowman? He snaps out of his trance before looking around at his options. To go left or right? Ah, which way was it? Left or right? Miles away, a muscular viking makes his way into a small room inside a factory. His head is hairless, except for his eyebrows. As he steps into the room, a slumped over viking bolts up straight, holding his shield to his chest. This clan's colors are white and black. Good to see you, ghost. We got some more captured. Bottom of the stairs. Oi. Ghost makes his way through a door and follows the stairs down, wiping his hand off his bald head. On his left wrist is a pip boy. The Viking follows Ghost down. At the bottom of the stairs, a group of people are chained to the walls. Six humans and an assaultron. Scanner sensing human entering room. A middle-aged man with long matted black hair lunges forward as far as his chains will allow him. You son of a bitch, I'll kill you. Dad, don't. Ghost turns toward the man's daughter and puts his hand under her chin, lifting her head up as if he's inspecting her. Her black hair tied back into a ponytail. Her frightened eyes look out through her glasses to Ghost. You do anything and I swear to God. Swear all you like. God won't answer. You're pretty. What's your name? Grace. Ghost looks to the girl on the right, who has similar features to Grace. Can I help you? I'm guessing these are your daughters. Try anything and you'll wish I killed them. Come on, do your worst. <laughs> Is that a challenge? You want to talk to someone? Talk to me. A man with ginger hair and a neatly trimmed goatee, wearing a battered red jacket, looks directly into Ghost's white eyes. He's in his thirties, but has a face that looks older. Does that mean you're the leader? Yes, I am. That means you're the one who lead them into this. Ghost opens his arms, signaling their imprisonment. My name's Ghost. My name's Edward. You've met Bradley and his daughters Grace and Olivia. The robot we just call assistants. The kid is Billy and the woman is Alice. You seem quite calm for what's about to happen. Oh, this isn't the end. I have faith we'll escape somehow. The chances of escape are 4.2%. Let's turn this thing off before someone gets killed. I have been programmed not to kill. Ghost connects the Pip-Boy to assistants and shuts the machine down. Standing down. An assaultron that cannot kill? How did you get this one? Happened for a reason. Just need faith. Ghost moves over to Alice with her knees to her chest. Her dark brown hair flows down onto her green leather jacket. A couple of sizes too big, it acts more as a security blanket. Her expression remains blank, as if it's been a long time since it smiled. His white eyes look at her, but she continues looking to the floor. Not gonna look at me. I have nothing to say. <laughs> You're all kinds of crazy, aren't you? Leave her alone! Ghost continues to focus on Alice. Nothing wrong with being crazy. The world is crazy. Only way to survive. Ghost makes his way over to the teenager who just confronted him. A young teenage girl with fear in her blue eyes. She's wearing a blue hoodie pulled over her short, sandy hair. Billy, you want me to leave here alone? Y yes How old are you? Fourteen. Have you killed someone yet? Fucked someone? Leave the kid alone. Ghost draws a knife and stabs Edward in the leg. Ah! <laughs> Fucker! <coughs> Bradley spits in Ghost's face. Ghost closes his eyes on impact and keeps them closed until he has wiped the spit away. Take him to clean up. 
A Viking comes along with a key, unchains Edward, and drags him off to get patched up. Don't confuse my acts as weakness. He's worth more alive. Ghost's white eyes flicker towards Bradley. Bradley, do you remember what I said? Fear breaks out on Bradley's face as he realizes what he's just caused. I'm sorry. It was the anger. I I did it without thinking. Now I am a man of my word. However, I am fair. You may choose which daughter I take. Grace or Olivia. End of chapter one. Hi, it's Buddy again. Um, so, uh, thanks, thanks for watching. If you enjoy our content, then uh, consider supporting us through Patreon, uh, where you can get a bunch of rewards and cool stuff, and keep up to date with what's going on. And don't forget to follow and subscribe on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter for all of our future content. And uh, just to let you know, this was performed by a group of amazing voice actors, not including me, and all of the links are in the descriptions below. And we'll see you next time. Cheers. I know it wasn't meant to last, and it just happened so fast. I never saw, never saw, never saw it coming. I know it's too good to be true, but I really loved you. Now your face, now your words. Everything is numbing, but at least now we know, at least now we know. Now I know.